Another way to get authenticated is to get it role-based. That means there is no system user this time part of the story. To get it role-based, you get authenticated using an Active Directory account or a login mask where you can enter credentials or something other else. And at the end, a person gets determined. The person itself is member in application roles. Each of these application roles has one particular permission group assigned. And this particular permission group will deliver all the permissions that at the end the person gets who signed in. The one or the other means, oh, knowing that and having different permission groups, I need a lot of application roles. This is not quite the truth. The reason is permission groups can be nested. And with that, you can have one parent permission group that holds all the other permission groups you need and you need just one role to get people in the right permission situation. Now we are using a role-based login. And to do so, I like to use a role-based login using my Active Directory account. First of all, to show you how role-based work, I remove here my attached system user from the Hervic identity. This is not necessary at all, but it ensures that everybody will trust me that this one here cannot have any effect on permissions. I delete as well the password to ensure that everything works well and store it to the database. Here we are. What I want to show you is, if I go back to uh, the overview page of Hervic, that there are some of these application roles already assigned. You can see them just here. There are 59 application roles assigned to Hervic, which makes Hervic to a, a super user. To show now how to log in, the only thing I have to do is to switch here to a new login to select in the authentication method that at the end it's a role-based authentication method. For example, I can use Active Directory user account role-based. As you can see, there is no other else what I have to configure. That means I have not to add an Active Directory account, whatever. I have only to ensure that I click on connect. I do that and seconds after, as you can see, I'm signed in in the manager. I have a lot of permissions. This time I see again, Avila Hervik here in the background, but you can see a system user CCC it's here assigned to. I will explain that in seconds. You see as well a number of uh, permission groups assigned to that specific account here. And you can see that it is the Active Directory user account role-based authentication that is already used here. Now let's talk a little bit about that specific super system user here. Um, role-based, as we all know, don't consider any system users. That is what we think. But in reality, it is a little bit different. And what happens here is something very special. If I switch back to the designer, what I can see here is in the permission section, there is a dynamic system user section. And this dynamic system user section shows me here a very interesting system user. If I click on it, I can as well see here some permission groups who are just assigned to that specific system user. And the reason for is we know there is the account of Hervik Abele in manager, and this account has some application roles assigned. We saw that before in the manager. The system itself, to simplify things, creates now a temporary system user, which is that one here, that represents exactly the permission assignment, in this case, the permission group assignment, to a specific user. That means I'm signing in as Hervik Abel, which is the identity. This identity has some application rules assigned and each of these application rules as well represents one permission group. The system creates now a system user, which is the dynamic system user here, and it assigns exactly the same permission groups to that specific system user and maps then, like uh, I taught it before, maps then this system user to the person. That is something that happens in the background. You have no effect on it, but this is what happens. If you change some role memberships of the Herbic account, for example, don't worry about it. This system user gets upgrade, updated or there gets another system user created with the same permission set and mapped. So this is an automatical thing. We have not to think about it because from our perspective, it's just role membership and everything works well. But I want to explain why these specific system users are here. 
Just to show you that I'm right, I just click on that. We see here a VI underscore four underscore all users have to be assigned to the Hervic account. Maybe it's better not to use this one. Maybe it's better just to use something more seldom. For example, I can look at that here. I am a VI underscore four underscore QAM admin, which has to do with data governments. And if I switch into the manager, and step to the permission group to assign permission group section, we should here find this specific uh, QAM data governance permission group as well. All users QAM admin. And here we are. I get assigned in as a person this particular permission information based on roles I have assigned to this identity.